Hey guys, welcome to History Behind the Warrior, and today we're going to be talking about Lars Alexanderson. Now right from the get-go, Lars is of Swedish descent. Lars is also the illegitimate son of Heihachi Mishima, making him the half-brother of Kazuya Mishima and the uncle of Jin Kazama. Now unlike Kazuya, Lars does not possess the devil gene. Although it has been passed down the Mishima bloodline, Lars has no direct relation to Kazumi Mishima, from which the devil gene first entered the family bloodline. Also unlike his brother, Lars is actually extremely young, being more around Jin's age, which is 21. Now once again, unlike most of his family, he did not learn the traditional Mishima fighting style. He would instead, whilst growing up, learn karate based on the Shoryu Jin Kenpo fighting style. And when he later joined Jin's Tekken Force, he would learn their traditional Tekken Force martial arts style, mastering it in a very short amount of time. Lars' story is very intertwined with Jin's Tekken 5 ending, in which Jin, after defeating his grandfather Jinpachi Mishima, gained control of the Mishima Zaibatsu. With Jin now control of the Mishima Zaibatsu, he engulfs the entire world into a war, although he does have a secret ulterior motive for doing so. With the world now engulfed in chaos, his biological father, Kazuya Mishima, would actually gain control of the G Corporation, and the two sides would clash, with both sides wanting each other dead. Now we can bring Lars into the picture. Aware of the pure sheer power his heritage had, Lars would join Jin's Tekken Force with the hopes of taking down his nephew from the inside. Lars was able to start his own rebellion within the Mishima Zaibotsu. Lars as their now leader would create operations that would dismantle the Mishima Zaibotsu and the G Corporation in order to stop the war. Now during a raid on one of the Mishima Zaibotsu's facilities, Lars would come across a woman called Alyssa Bosnoskovich. Before he could release the cyborg, they would be attacked by the G Corporation. During the battle, a massive explosion would happen, killing many people in it and leaving Lars with amnesia. With assistance from Melissa, Lars was able to escape the Mishima Zaibatsu facility. The two would then embark on a mission in order for Lars to regain his memory. Jin would learn of his half-uncle and create a manhunt in order to find him. Now during their journey, Lars was able to recover many of his memories but not gain them completely. With assistance from one of his lieutenants, Togu, he was able to find his father, Heihachi Mishima. Upon facing Heihachi, he would actually regain all of his memories. Lars would nearly kill Heihachi at gunpoint until Alyssa intervened. After a few words and Heihachi catching a bullet in his mouth, Lars would spare his father. Heihachi wished to join forces with Lars in order to take down his grandson and his son. But Lars declines, being well aware of Heihachi's track record with family members. Lars would later come into contact with his adopted brother, Lee Chao Long. Lee would help Lars out, as Lars had actually rescued one of Lee's close friends, Julia Chang. During this time, Kazuya would finally hear of his half-brother Lars. Lars's journey would eventually lead him to the G Corporation, where he's confronted by soldiers. With assistance from Togu and his men, Lars and Alyssa are able to confront and defeat Anna. When the two escape the G Corporation, they find out that Togu has been killed in battle, and Lars would vow to avenge his death. Lars then makes his way to the Mishima Zaibotsu's central tower, where he's confronted by Nina and defeats her. When Lars reaches the top of the tower, he's finally able to confront his nephew, Jin. In the twist of fate, Jin reboots Alyssa's memory banks and sets her on Lars. Jin reveals to his half-uncle Lars that he's in fact built Alyssa for the sole purpose of monitoring Lars' actions. Lars is then forced to fight and defeat his friend Alyssa. During the battle, Jin has already fleed, and after Alyssa is defeated, she disappears as well. He is then found by a man named Raven, who has actually been following Lars and Alyssa during their entire journey. Raven then offers his assistance to Lars in order to stop this war, in which Lars accepts. The two then travel to a abandoned temple in the middle of the desert, said to be home of the demon called Azazel. As they reach deeper inside the temple, Lars finally comes across his half-brother, Kazuya. After a brief battle, Kazuya and Anna retreat from the temple, with Kazuya reminding Lars that being part of the Mishima bloodline means that they'll fight each other again. When Lars and Raven reach the heart of the temple, they find Azazel. After a very brief battle, Azazel apparently self-destructs, making Lars and Raven flee the temple as it collapses. When they are outside, they are confronted by Jin and Alyssa. A fight breaks out with Lars and Raven finally defeating Alyssa. After Alyssa's defeat, she reverts to her old self and shares a brief, tearful reunion with Lars before expiring. Upon her apparent death, Jin begins insulting her and Lars. This enrages Lars, and the two fight, with Lars defeating his half-nephew. After Jin's defeat, he reveals his true intentions, having known about Azazel for a long time, saying that the only reason he engulfed the entire world into chaos was in order to draw out the demon, and that the devil gene apparently originated from Azazel. 
with Jin secretly hoping that if he was able to kill Azazel, then he would be able to eradicate the Devil Gene. Lars informs Jin that he has already defeated Azazel, but Jin reveals to him that only someone with the Devil Gene has the true ability to kill Azazel. With that being said, the demon erupts from the rubble of the temple and attempts to kill the two. Jin powers himself up with the Devil Gene, making him immune to Azazel's attacks. He then punches a hole through Azazel's chest, sending them plummeting to a bottomless pit, apparently sacrificing his own life. With Jin now gone, the control of the Mishima Zaibatsu is left unknown. But without a leader, the corporation goes quiet, and the world is finally able to have some peace. During this time, Lars and Raven take Alyssa's body to Lee, who promises to repair her as soon as possible. Lars bids Raven farewell and thanks him for his assistance in the final battle. When the two go different paths, Lars is given a call receiving a new mission. Although the player is not told what the mission is, what we do know is that Lars' mission in order to save the world is not yet finished. And that's it for Lars guys, he's definitely one of my favourite characters, as he has some of the best aspects taken from each of the Mishimas. Now here's a preview for the next Street Fighter episode guys. No need for talk, let's do this. Figured this was a great way to celebrate the release of Gao in Street Fighter V as he's one of many people's favourite characters and I need another character that has the same hair as Paul in my playlist somewhere. I also want to let you guys know that I'm still in Thailand right now so don't expect an episode to pop out next week Saturday because I'm actually travelling. But in saying that I return to the UK on the 3rd of May so you guys will get your regular uploads around then. Also Mortal Kombat videos will be going back to their normal Wednesday schedules before any of you ask or get worried as I haven't made one in about 2 weeks now. And yes when I come back we are going to be doing the comics, I'm going to be breaking it down into about 4 sections. I would like to thank you guys for also being very patient with me as I haven't been uploading on the regular but I want to thank everyone who has stuck around this channel for so long. We are very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers which is absolutely incredible. Now as always guys please comment like and definitely subscribe to this channel. Take care and I will see you guys next time.